What's the purpose of a transition and why do we use them? Well, an excellently used transition is one that we barely even notice. Its purpose is to subconsciously enhance a story by tying together different clips, sequences, and scenes. Hey guys, welcome back to another video editing tutorial. So if you are an editor, a director, a producer in any capacity, or just a wannabe like myself, then you've likely been watching a movie and saw an amazing camera movement plus a transition in there, and you were like, oh! What? Didn't you see that? Never mind. Now while transitions aren't always super important for the viewer to know about, they are important for the creation of video. So just like in the intro to this video, there were a few shots from the series Sherlock Holmes. In that series, there are so many fun transitions all throughout. However, most people don't even notice them because they're so taken up with the storyline and that's how it should be. So in this video, we are going to go through some transitions together, how to shoot them and if necessary, how to edit them in Final Cut Pro. Number one, the transitionary clip. For example, in the Netflix series called Dark, there's amazing videography and strong storytelling. However, the transitions are very simple. Every time there's a transition from one scene to another, they have this drone shot that goes over top of the trees and subconsciously in your mind, you know right away that they're changing from one scene to another. It is so simple yet super effective. So how can we use this in our own videos or in my case, travel videos? So to indicate a change from one scene to another in a travel video, you can have a drone shot of a bus or your van or a boat driving or B-roll outside of a plane window or even outside of the car window. You could even animate a plane flying like I've done in previous tutorials. This just allows the viewer to understand there's going to be a new location. Another way to completely transition out of a scene is with a time lapse. Probably the easiest way to close out a day or even a trip is a sunset time lapse. Transition number two, and that is simple drag and drop clip to clip transitions. Wipes, pans, glitches, blurs, zooms. They are examples of these types of transitions. Here's a bad use of a zoom transition. However, here can be a good use of a zoom transition from a drone shot to an action camera. So just like they say in writing, if you can use less words to tell the same story, then do it. Fancy words are just distracting. Now the same applies for these types of transitions. They don't make your video fancy, so less is more in many cases. So have fun with these transitions because they are really easy to use. However, clean cuts are great cuts. Number three, and that's camera panning. And this can either be from down up, up down, left to right. And the way we do this is if we're filming something in one scene and we swipe out to the right, in the following clip, we wanna come in from the left and then to the right. This is what it looks like. Here's a pan of me quickly moving from the back to the front of my house. This transition also works really well when the action is happening in a certain direction on or across the screen. Number four, screen overlays. So bokeh, film burn, or flares, light leaks, these types of things. Flares and light leaks work really well on sunny days that show light coming into the lens. Bokeh is another way that we can show light leaking into the lens. They're also super nice at night. Here's how we do it in our editor. We can drop in the overlay on top of our clips. We're going to cut it with Command B. Up in the inspector where you see compositing, we're gonna change it from normal to screen and that will zip out all of the black screen there. We can also change the opacity if we don't want the effect to be so bright. Next, we're gonna add a cross dissolve on either side, drag it to our desired length, and then we'll see what it looks like. And as you can see there, the bokeh adds this kind of surreal effect as it's spinning around. So here's another example of some bokeh and a light leak transition. So here's our editor, we have our clips, we're gonna play those back. Next, we're going to add some bokeh. So I have this overlay here, I'm just gonna drop it over top of the two clips on the timeline. I'm going to trim it down to the desired length, then remove the extra. From here, I'm going to change the compositing mode to screen, just like the last time, that removes the black. All right, that looks great. But to add a bit more, we're going to add a light leak transition. This transition pack I have, we're going to use leak 15, and just drop it just like any transition there, and there's our final effect. 
Now I've been asked in previous tutorials, where do you get your light leaks, your film burns, green screens, screen overlays? And the answer is Envato Elements. Okay, so here is what the website looks like. And you just go to the search bar and you can type in whatever you like. So I'll just type in overlays. And there are multiple different packs from various different creators who upload this to like a stock collection. And you can just download any of these custom creator packs, which is amazing. I've never seen anything like this before, which is really cool. So let's type in flares and see what we can find. So these are some pretty good looking flares. Consider taking that. Here's another pack of 20 leaks and flares. All right, these 4K organic flares. I think this has caught my attention and yes, these flares are really, really nice. So I'm definitely gonna download these. So you just click download and you type in the project that you wanna use it for and it grants you a custom license for that project. It's just that easy. Okay, so this is also where I get my transitions. So if you just type in Final Cut Pro transitions and this ultimate transition pack of 200 is actually what I've been using mostly for this tutorial video has so many nice transitions in here. I mean, there's some cheesy ones as well, but we have some solid glitch transitions and I do like the light leak transitions as well. As you saw, we used leak 15 earlier in this video. There are so many great transitions you can find if you just hunt through this website and look at all these different creator packs, so nice. So this website also does stock videos. So let's type in Hawaii, for example. And yeah, there's various clips of Hawaii. We can look into it more, but yeah, let's look at all the items this website provides. So many different things from fonts to photos to stock video to web templates and everything. All of these elements, unlimited downloads per month for $16.50. So if you're interested in Envato Elements, just click the link in my description. Number five, and that's the match cut. And we see so many of these in movies and I love watching them. Basically the subject or the focus is fixed and the background changes or the body just moves in the exact same way, but in two different scenes. Here's another example where this can be used from a car wheel to a dirt bike wheel. You can just find similar looking objects and change the background. Number six, L and J audio cuts. Using audio to create seamless transitions is probably the most used cut or transition in Hollywood. I really don't know a movie that doesn't use the LRJ cut. This is when the audio lingers past when the clip has finished or the audio from the next scene appears before the video does. When the listener hears the audio of the next scene, this already prepares their mind for what is about to happen and it makes the transition more smooth. An example for a way to use this in a travel video is to bring in the audio of transport, like a train or a car or a plane, for example, when you're exiting out of scene, in comes the audio and makes that transition. Number seven, and I don't know the name of this, maybe it's frame blocking or wiping or passing by, but I'm going to call it color to color transitions. Black is the easiest color to transition from as you move your camera into black and you start your next scene out of that black color. It's so easy because all you need to do is just block the lens and you'll get black every time. However, there's other ways, different colors, different textures, there's water. This is one of my favorite ways to transition from clip to clip as it can really appear quite smooth with your camera movements, light to light, dark to dark, etc. However, sometimes this does require a bit of planning to end your clip on a certain color or texture, then start that next clip from something similar looking, even though you might be in a different scenario or situation. Okay, let's jump in the editor. We have our two raw clips with a blip of a transition right there. All we need to do is drop a cross dissolve into the middle, extend it out, and look how smooth this looks after that. Number eight, and that's jump cuts. And one way to effectively use a jump cut is to show time elapsing or time passing. It's almost like a time lapse. However, there's more detail in the shot. The main way we use a jump cut is when someone is talking to the camera just like this. And for whatever reason, they need to take a break or they screw up. You don't have to start all over again. Instead, you just insert a jump cut. This can be a camera angle change or even a punch in. Punching in actually hides the jump cut and makes it seem like you have more angles than you really do. But you don't always want to use jump cuts. Sometimes it's just better to reshoot that section of talking in whatever the case is, if it's a speech or interview. Number eight, and that is TikTok transitions. 
Number nine, <laughs> mask transitions. Okay, I'm actually going to stop it here because mask transitions is a huge topic and that's going to be the next tutorial all about masking. It's called 10 ways to use a mask and we'll dive deep into all the different ways we can do that. So I hope you got something out of this tutorial and it's going to be helpful for your next edit. Like I said before, some transitions require a bit of pre-thought, however some you can just figure out in post. So if this video was helpful, then be sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. No, I'm just kidding. Don't follow me on TikTok. But do give the video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you aren't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.